of Hoosier drivers here, Ted. Both of them are long respected in a variety of forms of motorsports. Hoffman used to be a tractor puller. Turpin actually campaigned the old Taurus monster truck, and what a whole shot there, Ted. This one's going to be over early, although trying to give it a shot right there was Andy Hoffman. Turpin with a full car link, or should I say truck link win. And while our next monster trucks line up, let's check in with Doc Riley, who's with our winner. Looked like you kind of hit the first set of jumps just a little bit cockeyed, but looked like you recovered pretty well. Yeah, it's, uh, as long as the way it bits, again in the mud, and when you come out there and you land, it gets a little sideways, but you just pedal just enough, and then straighten it back up. And I got enough for all the Fords and Dodges here today. A fairly new entry with the uh, new Dodge involvement, the Raminator, driven by Dave Bernier out of Champaign, Illinois. He'll be taking on the most famous monster truck of all, the Bigfoot Ford out of St. Louis, Missouri, currently driven by Dave Harkey. Well, it's the most heavily science truck on the planet, and Harkey has gone through Bob Chandler's legendary years and years and years of training to be able to drive the big blue Ford. And he gets the whole shot. Bernier's got to give him a good run for it. What a race! Very close. Oh. Bernier just nosed him out. Wow, what a drag race that was. And what an upset that was. Let's take another look at it. The Raminator off the line right away with a slight jump. It was really the closest drag race we've seen in some time. Let's check in with Doc Riley, who is with our winner. The Raminator team has come into full force right here. And I tell you one thing, Dale Bonier, a tough break for you guys right here. Looks like a little engine problem. Yeah, it's too bad. Everybody wants to come to Indy and win, you know. When uh, Bigfoot guys, they're uh, really tough to beat. And, and uh, it's really screaming down the track there. I really wanted that one bad. And uh, I think I got him and everything. They called me the winner. But uh, too bad that had to happen. I don't really want to go on. One of those things that happens, that part fails, and you are sitting on the sideline. A tough break. You don't see that very many times out of the Dodge Raminator team. A factory-backed effort, and they will take that block apart and look at what did fail. This ESPN2 Speed World coverage of the Skyjacker Monster Trucks from the Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals is brought to you by Skyjacker, the bear of suspension. And by Special Events Performance Series, America's number one truck shows. Learn more at familyevents.com. The Skyjacker Monster Trucks. Let's find out more about Monster Trucks with Doc Riley. Ladies and gentlemen, there's lots of racing as we've seen. There's the custom show and shine. There's so much to do at the Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals. There's something for everyone. Even kids can get involved with it. If you want to learn more, simply log on to the World Wide Web at FamilyEvents.com to learn more about the Special Events Performance Series and the Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals. Think about it. Taking a ride in a monster truck, the ride of a lifetime in Sergeant Smash. There literally is something for everyone to do at a Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals. And, Brent, you know, the kids absolutely love this thing. They actually go over some uh, humps of dirt and everything to give you the feeling of what it's like to ride in one of these monster trucks. Let's get back to the action right now, starting out with the sudden impact Ford of John Seesock out of uh, Pennsylvania, and he'll be taking on the Scarlet Bandit of Don Cretton. Don Cretton, the only currently touring female monster truck pilot in the near lane, and Seesock has been at this game since it started two decades ago. Another great drag race, and Don Cretton pulls out the win. Wow, that was a race. Well, if Brett, the most significant thing, her husband is up next, getting ready to run the Bounty Hunter Ford out of Kansas City. He's been at it for about eight years. He and Don have two children, a normal family lifestyle, except on weekends. What do we do? We race monster trucks. His opponent, Greg Adams, out of Indianapolis, the hometown favorite. Greg has driven a lot of different monster trucks. He's also one of the great chassis builders in this sport. And with the Summit truck-style team, he's got the backing he needs to take the Checker Shucks, Craig, and group on heads up. This could be a heck of a drag race here. Well, watch the starter in the middle. Look, a little jump start. Yeah, right something there. happened there. That should be a red light foul start, Ted. I'm thinking Cretton's out of here. And the win should go to the, the Summit team. Yes, Greg Adams gets the victory on a foul start by Jimmy Cretton. And you got to ride along with that to get some idea of what he sees outside that truck. Now you can see what the spectators saw. They went ahead, raced anyway, and made a show for the fans. Oh, boy, they almost did down there. <laughs> that was close. Let's check in with Doc Riley. But Jimmy Creighton, one of those aggressive drivers that's always out there, it seems like you've diagnosed a problem. What is it? Yeah, we did. If you notice at the end of our run, uh, the rear steering went to one side and almost made us uh, kind of uh, 
take a, make a flip around real quick down there, and sometimes that makes the truck flip over. Uh, what happens, this is our automatic rear steering, and the rear steer uh, centers off these, off these two ball switches. And this one is stuck. You can see from the meter that it, it reads negative resistance, uh, absolutely no resistance. So it's actually making contact through, and it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be normally open which in a state like this, and uh, when it's made, then it makes, then it, makes it close. Uh, so we gotta go back to the trailer and get another ball switch out of the, tr out of the truck, and uh, we'll be ready for free stop. What's the uh, estimated retail value of that? <laughs> Probably $12. $12 part puts a $10,000 monster truck back on the pad. But hey, freestyle will be coming up. You know, Ted, what he basically said there was Jimmy Crit said that Without him doing anything, the rear wheels turned as far as they could. He did a great job saving that thing. Indeed he did. He could have had it upside down. Mike Botters out of Hagerstown, Maryland, will be our next monster truck up the Black Stallion Ford. They call him the Madman. Now, he was supposed to run Andy Slifko out of Pottsville, PA, but he had some ignition problems, so the Eradicator Ford is waved off. It'll be a single breath. Tough break for Slipko. He's a, he's a hard charger without the budget of a lot of these big teams. Botters has been at this game since the start of monster truck racing, especially indoors. Had the first monster out of the state of Maryland. And he's not a fool. He's taking it easy, saving the parts for the next round. Well, one of the most important safety features in a monster truck is an RII, the Remote Ignition Interruption Device. And that RII device is used to take the spark away from the engine. Andy Sipko got right over there, and he couldn't get the RII to work. Well, that's why these guys are going back through and checking it. John Seasock, one of his running mates right there. John, very instrumental to monster truck safety. And these guys are trying to get it right and tight. That's one thing. You don't run the truck if the RII doesn't work. And a tough break for Andy Sipko as he got ready to go, but the radio did not work. A very important safety feature whenever anyone goes monster truck racing. Well, Ted, in the next round of competition, Bigfoot gets back in on the brake rule as the Raminator cannot return. He'll take on American Dream and Scarlet Bandit against the Summit Truck Style Battle. Should be one of the toughest ones. Also, don't forget about Black Stallion and Nightmare, who's back in as the first round loser from round one. That's so we don't have any buys. We'll have that when we continue from Indianapolis. Stay tuned, please. The Mickey Thompson Burnout Contest also took place. The fans love that. We'll have more coverage in another program. Right now, let's get going with round number two of the Monster Trucks. Ooh, a good up close and tight shot right there of Bigfoot, driven by Dave Harkey, who is at the wheel. You might say his work at the office. He'll be facing off this time against the American Dream. Dave Turpin out of Waysboro, Indiana. Boy, these two have squared off before when Turpin was driving the Taurus truck. These two had a war going. Now, the American Dream is the only Chevrolet in this battle. This could be interesting. Chevy aboard. They leave the line, and it's the Chevrolet with a truck link lead. Here comes Bigfoot. Oh, and Turpin breaks. Parkey, his second reprieve of the event. Unbelievable. Well, maybe that's why Bigfoot is so invincible. And boy, he came down right on the front end. Take a look at this one again. You can see Bigfoot spinning the wheels, but an excellent job getting off the line as he drove around American Dream. Bang! Down on the front wheels he goes. Well, Dave Harkey, just about anything can happen in Indy. You know, you think you got it all the field covered, and then again, next thing happens, well, it just doesn't. But Bigfoot, moving on to the next round. Yeah, we got lucky that first round. We're advancing. Uh, I tell you, they got a tough crowd here. There's a, everybody's everybody's shot to win this one. It's a good one. It's a unique course too. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's kind of neat dropping off of that hole and then coming, <laughs> jumping out and then finding the cars and say, "Hey, there they are. Let's go." Good luck in the next round. Thank you. Up next, our only female entry, Dawn Cretton, who's been doing this for four years, by the way. She performs 40 weekends a year and is a former Army medic. Well, this should be an interesting race with the Summit Truck Style Ford of Greg Adams right here in Indy up against Ted. I have to say, Don Cretton may well be the crowd favorite at this event in the Ford Expedition. And these are two of the most heavily financed trucks in the entire field. And the whole shot may have gone to the Summit Truck. It looks like a fuel leak. What a race! But the Summit Truck pulls it out. Ted, that's the third almost dead heat drag race we've seen. Some of the closest drag racing in monster truck racing this year. Believe me, we've got it for you right here on ESPN2. Let's take a look at what happened right there with the Summit Truck. I do see that liquid coming out. That may be fuel or it may be something from the transmission. I really don't know what it is, but I can tell you that truck didn't spin. 
Man, you are hard charging. Hey, Doc, we've been out here running hard all year, and uh, it's, it's good to be back here in our, in our home city, uh, for, especially for Summit Truck Style, and we've been able to take Summit Truck Style a couple rounds. What, could, what would you have done different? Anything? Uh, we're a little bit under on horsepower. We're probably 100 cubic inches smaller than everybody, but we can turn this little motor pretty hard. Absolutely, and he does that every single time. Nothing to be ashamed of there. Running pretty high and proud in Indianapolis, his hometown, Summit Truck Style and Greg Adams. Ted Adams has only run at 466 inches in that thing. And as he said, 100 cubic inches shy. But take a look at how close this finish was. You can see he won it by about a tire length. Yeah. yeah Doc is with our loser, Don. Well, Don, the first lady of Monster Truck Racing, a tough break right there in that round. What happened? Well, I, from what I hear, I took off on time, but I got out of it going out underneath the hole, and all it took was a split second. That's all it takes here in Indianapolis. Boy, I tell you, a lot of drivers have said coming out of that hole and then coming right back up is uh, something you really have to get used to. Yeah, I think it is. You're, you're staring at the cars the whole time when you're on the line and you don't see them for that split second. You've got to refocus, and I think it does. It takes a pra little practice, a little time. Time for the Black Stallion now. Mike Vodder's up again. 25 years he's had experience with these trucks, Brett Kepner. Yeah, he's always won Fords. He's always been an extremely aggressive driver, no question about it. Now, up against the nightmare machine, Andy Hoffman is equally aggressive, so I really don't even want to venture to guess what's going to happen here. Now, what Don was talking about, the, the drop off the starting line and losing sight of the crush cars that you have to aim for is a problem, but the, the tire spin we're seeing because of that mud pit is really affecting the way these trucks launch. Hoffman, a former tractor puller for 10 years. This is going to be another close race. Michael Waters gets the win. But I'll tell you, coming out of that pit, they were pretty darn even. They were until about the halfway point. At that point in time, the Nightmare went a little bit off course. Let's take another look at it. You'll see what happened. The Nightmare forced to correct there and lift just a little bit. And oh, you're right. Yep, you can see the truck almost go off the right side of the crush cars, Ted. Good eye. Moving on to the next round, that would be something to win Indy in your 25th anniversary of riding the old Black Stallion. Yeah, we were really been working hard. You know, we came here and seen the track. You know, we get we start off and go down into that ditch, and uh, we're trying to fight that with our suspension because I think that's the most critical part of this race. Seems like the suspension may unload a little bit as you go back down and pop back up. What can you do to kind of detune that a little bit? Well, with my shocks, you know, we've been working with the bypass tubes for the last 10 years, and that really helps, and we can make some quick adjustments in between rounds, and that's what we've been doing, fighting it. Good luck in the next round. The Ted Big News, Dawn Cretton is back in the show with the Scarlet Bandit as the last round's fastest loser. She'll take on Michael Vodders in the Black Stallion next round. Of course, at the four-wheel Jamboree Nationals, it's all about tough trucks, tough truck racing, and tough trucks that sometimes go a little off-roading at select events. Of course, there is rock crawling, and the folks from Skyjack right here are not into pretty vehicles. Well, they start with pretty vehicles, but you can see here, this one has maybe seen its better day. Larry Combo right here. Man, you guys have got an incredible product line, and this bad boy right here is far from winning any beauty contests over there in the show and shine. It would have a few weeks ago, but right now it hadn't. We went to one of the rock crawl events uh, over in Tennessee at one time, and then one of the owners ended up rolling the vehicle down. We had some of our students. One of your owners? Yes, sir. Uh, J.R. Uh, Lonnie McCurry, Jr. was in there. And he was driving it at that time, trying to make an obstacle that he probably should not have tried. But you got to go for it. We build all kinds of lift applications. Ford, Dodge, Chevy, Jeep, the full gambit, all the way back from the 60s all the way up to the current day. And that's just not all suspensions either. You guys have got other great applications as well. We sure do. We have all the components you need. We have steering systems. We have shocks. We have multiple line of shocks. We have coils, coilover systems. We have a full gambit, full applications for anything you need to meet. Whether you're mild or wild, we've got the full gambit for you. We'll take a break. When we come back, you'll get to ride with Bigfoot. Number three, the semifinals. There comes Bigfoot as he gets ready to go. His opponent will be Greg Adams, the former driver of the Hot Pursuit and the Crimson Crusher Monster Trucks, now driving for Summit Racing Equipment. This could be the race that people came to see right here, the Summit Ford against the Bigfoot Ford. Adams and Harkey could give us one of the great monster wars of the year, right here. Watch the starter. He'll point to the Christmas tree. It turns green, and they're gone. Whole shot goes to the Summit Truck. Bigfoot is definitely behind. Here they come at the finish. Oh! He nipped him right as they went over the last jump with the cars. You're on board with him right there. 
You can see him doing what he does best, driving a four-wheel drive monster truck to victory. Well, Dave Harkey, I'll tell you one thing. It's better to be uh, lucky than good sometimes. That's right. Uh, I'll tell you what, we've made her to the finals. i tell you, it's been tough, but we're here. We're going to see if we can take her home. Man, unbelievable racing. With the Black Stallion lining up against Don Cretton, I don't even know what to expect, Ed. Well, I think the audience definitely favors Don, but we'll remind you for all the latest news and notes from the world of motorsport, visit rpm.espn.com. You know, one thing about this edition of the toughest monster truck race out there here at Indy, all four semifinalists driving Fords, Ted. It's an all-Ford final. You can bet the Ford fans are excited about that. Let's see if this race is as close as our other one, which was almost impossible to call. Uh-oh, Bonners was in and out of the throttle, and it was as close as the other race. I can't believe that Bonners hung on to win that. He was completely off the throttle before he hit the crush cars. Well, he jumped out, took the lead right away, and as you said, he had the lift, which gave Don a chance to catch up, but she didn't have enough. Ford versus Ford, the Battle of Indy. It's on, man. Yeah, I tell you, I had a, had a uh, corporate team on both sides. I mean, we got rid of the one now. We got the big one, the, the big four team. So uh, we're going to work hard and try and get out of that hole before them. Black Stallion up against the Bigfoot. What's the, uh, what's the strategy? Uh, like I said, just get out, try and leave hard, and come out of that hole and get on the ground before them and put the fire to the ground. And hopefully we'll cross that uh, finish line in the air before them. Blue Oval Bunch could be celebrating here. Mike Botters hopes that he can cap an anniversary celebration this year with a victory at Indy. Well, let's hope he doesn't have to lift again because I don't think Bigfoot will give him that kind of a break. Michael said it best. He said, I've got to get off the line first, and then I have to get it on the ground first. That means he's got to stay low coming out of that pit to keep the tires on the ground. You can't apply power, Ted, if the tires are in the air. If he wants to overpower Bigfoot, he's got to keep the wheels on the ground and get some power to the ground. Now, running and setting their tracks is like doing a burnout in drag racing, but he's actually just setting the imprints and packing the dirt down so he can get good traction when he leaves. And he's getting a feel for what the dirt is. Uh, we've been racing all afternoon now. The sun has baked a lot of the moisture out of that pit, so he wants to feel where the dirt is firmest because, like I said, he wants traction. He knows he has to put the power to the ground. Harkey just stages it up on the starting line. Watch the starter. When he points away to the tree, they'll be off and gone. Let's see if it pays off for Botters. If there was a whole shot, it went to Bigfoot, but here comes Michael Botters. No, oh, it's Bigfoot in one of the hardest days of work Dave Harkey has ever had to put out. He earned this one. He had the brakes. Let's take a ride right now with Harkey. You can see what he saw as he drove his monster truck to victory one more time. Doc Riley is there with our winner right now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's not pretty, but it's good. Congratulations, Dave Harkey. A win in Indy. That's right. I'll tell you what. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the guys back at the shop. They, I couldn't do it if it uh, wasn't for the equipment that they put on under me. Bob is such an excellent guy to work for. Hell, hey, do it, do it for me. Say it's great to take a home away from Indy. Now the freestyle competition, Brett. This is something that the fans really enjoy. They say sometimes more than the drag racing. The idea is you come out and put on the best show you can with your monster truck. They listen to the fan applause, and they decide who the winner is. Well, the one interesting aspect about the freestyle at Indy is that it's the freestyle at Indy. This is still the biggest, baddest monster truck race on the planet, and these guys do all kinds of insane stuff, as you just saw, to try and gain the crowd's favor. Look at the Summit Truck Style Machine's airborne wheel stand that had them standing on the seat backs. They were cheering so loud. Look at this kind of action. They absolutely love the wheel stands with the monster trucks. How about over backwards? Another over. monster truck! Over another monster truck! That's not trick photography, folks. We're not playing the tape backwards. Michael Botters actually pulled that off here at Indy. And then he pulled this off! Botters was on the road doing everything, including turning over backwards. Is there any doubt who won this one? Hey, i tell you one thing. It's Indianapolis. You might as well have a little fun. i tell you what, 20 years of this hard stuff over these cars and racing down the track and... Uh, Hard lot of miles down the road, you know. I just thought I'd let it all hang out. This is my favorite part of monster truck racing. It's freestyle. I'll give it about 90% racing, and I'll give it 150% in freestyle. 
Congratulations to our winner. Want to see more? How about Tough Rock action? November the 8th at 6 p.m. Then we'll have the Skyjacker Rock Crawl coverage November 24th at 1230. And we'll end it up here in Indianapolis with Mud Drag coverage November 26th at 5 p.m. Join us for those programs. That's a wrap from Indianapolis, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ted Jones for Brett Kepner and Doc Riley. So long, everyone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.